Welcome to PowerCoat Music. In this presentation, we are going to do an overview of the Yamaha MGP32X 32 channel mixing console. Since I purchased my main mixer in the early 2000s to the time of this presentation, professional mixing console technology has advanced significantly, offering things like better internal architecture and design, better power supply handling and management, superior preamps, the integration of digital functionality while maintaining analog integrity and its warmth of sound, and much, much more. The bottom line here is that if I'm able to up my game with a new mixing console without sacrificing uh, the ability to meet all of my requirements and more, then shouldn't I at least take a look? Well, during the past several years, for the reasons described previously, I've been attracted to the Yamaha MGP32X 32-channel mixing console. Now, many of you may be thinking to yourselves, I don't need a 32-channel mixing console. Well, that's cool because the good news is the Yamaha MGP series mixing consoles come in four different models, which include, of course, the MGP 32X 32-channel mixing console, the MGP 24X, which is a 24-channel mixing console, the MGP 16X, which is, again, a 16-channel mixing console, and the MGP 12X, which is a 12-channel mixing console. Now, in this presentation, I'm going to do an overview of the MGP 32X, and this is because in my studio here, due to all of the sound modules, drum machines, and keyboards, I need all of the inputs I can get. So this overview will include the MGP-X32's features, the MGP-32X's technical specifications, uh, the all basically all the different MGP-32X setup examples, or at least a few of them, and an analysis of both the MGP-32X's mono and stereo buses. Please keep in mind that the MGP-X, or should I say the MGP-24X, is basically the same console as the MGP-32X with less inputs and comp control knobs. That's very important to keep in mind if you're kind of, you know, toggling between the two. Now with this, I'll refer to images of the MGP-24X or the MGP-32X regarding the same features and functionalities throughout this presentation. Let's talk about price. The MGP32X retails for $1,600 new, and the MGP24X retails for $1,380 new. Now, with money being tight, you can probably find these on the used market for significantly cheaper, or my suggestion would be to check out the refurb market. In many cases, you might be able to find these units straight from a manufacturer's uh, you know, uh, refurbished program with a warranty for, in some cases, up to 10 and 30% off. So that would be my suggestion if money's tight and you're looking for a deal. Let's start with the Yamaha MGP32X's main features. So we have a D pre-discrete class A microphone preamp. Uh, that, that type of technology is installed with inverted Darlington circuit design on the model channels only. Now this is a mouthful, so let's take a look at what this means. So this is used in high-end audio devices and reproduces low frequencies with very musical characteristics, as well as sustained high frequencies. Now the inverted Darlington circuit is a amplifying method for eliminating nonlinear characteristics of the amplifier element and suppressing distortion. You can get a much nicer sound here. The next feature is expressive EQ um, that gives you more warmth and musicality of the classic vintage EQs. Now, again, this is on the mono channels. What this means is that um, we have a technology here that models analog EQ using Yamaha's VCM technology. The cutoff frequency can be adjusted, which enhances the use of the EQ in the sound reinforcement application or arena. And it also extends the sonic control range of the unit. 
The next feature is the USB port that connects your, you can use it to connect your iPod or iPhone for playback with a single connection. So a USB device recorder is built into the mixer for recording mixed audio to a USB device uh, as an audio file. And users can play back their music saved in the USB by signing it to desired channel output or a bus output. Moving on. Uh, another feature, main feature, is the Stereo Master Comp and Graphic EQ. So the Stereo Master has a built-in uh, compressor that adjusts sound pressure for the output signal. It also has a graphic equalizer. Now the next feature is a built-in digital uh, effects processor. Now this is called, or Yamaha calls it, the RevX and SPX. Now the RevX is a high-density reverberant sound ambience with a smooth uh, boost, spread, and depth that work together. SPX features many effects that include reverb, delay, modulation, along with a combination of these multiple effects. So you kind of have a multiple effects processor as well. Uh, the last but not least main feature is the MGP software editor. This is a free software application that gives you more control over the MGP's digital signal processing settings using your iPhone, iPad, or uh, iPad iPod Touch. Now you download this application from Yamaha's website. Let's move on to the Yamaha MGP32X's technical specifications. Right off the bat, this is an analog mixer with 32 channels. It has uh, computer connectivity via USB and 36 faders. It also has 24 XLR mic preamps that have phantom power and it has 32 TRS line inputs and other inputs consist of four stereo RCA. And regarding outputs, the main outputs are two XLR, two TRS, and one XLR mono. And the other outputs uh, consist of four TRS uh, outputs for monitoring and four TRS for bus. With that, we move on to the aux sends, which there are six and there are also six TRS and four stereo send return IOs. There are four bus groups and the unit also has channel inserts as well as a headphone input. It also has uh, talkback capability and three band sweepable mid EQ. The unit also has digital effects which we talked about previously and below that are the height, width, depth, and weight of the unit. Let's look at some MGP32X setup examples. On your screen now is a setup example that should give you a good idea of how to connect your gear to the back panel inputs and outputs of the MGP32X. You may want to pause this presentation to take a few seconds to study and track these back panel input and output connections to see how they might work for you. Now that you've kind of taken some time to get an idea of how you might configure the MGP32X for your studio, let's move on. On your screen, we have the top panel connection examples using a USB device, an iPhone, and headphones. Finally, we'll look at both the MGP32X's mono and stereo bus top panel controls. The MGP32X's channel buses are divided into two sections, these being mono inputs and stereo inputs. We'll now review the top panel controls for both. We'll start with the 26 decibel pad switch. This boosts the input signal from the input jack of the mono channel by 26 decibels. Moving on, we have the plus four volt switch and indicator. This toggles the phantom power on and off. And of course, you want to be sure to leave the switch off if you don't need to use phantom power. What follows then is the gain knob. This adjusts the sensitivity of the input signal. Next, we have the high pass filter switch. Now, when you turn this on, it will apply a high pass filter that boosts frequencies below 100 hertz in the signal by a slope of 12 decibels, or should I say a 12 decibel octave. 
Next we have the comp controls and indicator for channels 9 through 24 and of course uh, 9 through 16. This adjusts the amount, the amount of compression applied to the channel. After that we have the ducker source indicator. Uh, this is the indicator of the selected input source. After that we have the ducker switch. Now when you turn this on this lowers the volume of the stereo channel automatically uh, when a signal exceeding a certain level is input to the input source. After that we have the leveler switch and indicator. When you turn this on it allows the volume to be adjusted automatically to a certain level. Then we have the input select switch. This selects the input source signal. Then moving on we have the stereo image switch. This selects the type of output signal for the input stereo signal. For instance mono, blend, or stereo are your uh, choices. After that we have the equalizer knobs, high, mid, and low. This is again it's, it's a three band equalizer and you use that to change the tone of the high, mid, and low frequency bands obviously. Moving on we have the aux knobs one through four. These knobs adjust the channel signal levels into the aux buses of uh, one through four. Then we have the pre-switch. This selects whether the pre-fader or the post-fader signal is fed to the corresponding pair of aux one through four buses. Aux one and aux two and also aux three and aux four should be paired. Next we have the effects knobs one and two. These knobs adjust the channel's post fader signal levels into FX buses 1 and 2. Moving on, we have the AUX 5 and AUX 6 switch. This selects whether the channel's post fader signal is sent to the AUX buses 5 and 6 or the FX buses 1 and 2. Moving on, we have the pan knob for the mono channels and the balance knob for the stereo channels. These knobs set the stereo pan position and determine the volume balance between left and right. What follows are the on switches. Turning these switches on sends the channel signal to the buses. After that we have a peak indicator. This lights red when the channel's post equalizer signal level reaches 3 decibels before clipping. Next after that we have the uh, SIG or signal indicator. This lights green when a signal is being input to the channel. What follows then is the bus assigned switches. These switches determine the buses to which the channel signal is sent. After that we have the PFL or better known as the pre-fader listen switch and indicator. When turned on the indicator comes on and the channel's pre-fader signal is output to the monitor out and phone jacks for monitoring. Last but not least is the channel fader which adjusts the output level of the input channel signal. In summary, for the past 21 years I've had the same main analog mixing console in my studio which is the Behringer MX9000. Up until now this board has served me well with relatively no issues. I even did a video on this mixer called Behringer Eurodesk MX9000 48x24 channel dual input 8 bus mixing console and why I use it on this channel. From my perspective Yamaha took the analog mixer to the next level. With the MGP 32X's design and features you never know I may just upgrade my console sooner than you think. Well that is a wrap. If you like this presentation please give it the thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now to join our group. We have new presentations coming out every 7 to 14 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Leave a comment in the comment section below let us know what you think about this presentation and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Also while you're here listen to some of the music and check out some of the other videos along with the playlist because they're designed just for you. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to hearing from you soon.